Finally this hour. You've got mail. Have you noticed changes on Facebook lately? Could it actually become a real news source? Well, last week, the social networking giant announced a new update to its news feed. It's more visual, and Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg says the idea is to create a personal newspaper for the user. In today's Tech Tuesday, Kevin Falkenberry, executive vice president at the Jacksonville-based PR and advertising firm, The Dalton Agency, joins us now with a closer look at the new Facebook. Hi, Kevin. How are you doing, Melissa? Great to see you. Uh, full disclosure, we used to work together, yes, so uh, I appreciate you coming and being on the show. So Mark Zuckerberg, with a lot of fanfare, announced these changes to the news feed. And whenever uh, Facebook makes changes, a lot of the time people complain. They don't like change. People like what they're used to. They like to keep things the way they are. But Facebook, especially now as a publicly held company, has a lot of pressure on it to keep reinventing itself and constantly stay on the forefront of this whole social media revolution. MySpace just launched a new um, design. Google and Instagram are getting some traction on their very simplified design. So what they're doing here is really stripping down all the clutter, as they call it, and looking at just the images. How do we deliver images to people so that it's colorful, bright, and they're getting these visual, you know, engagement? Sure. If you share, a, you know, a news article, a photo, or a video, uh, you're going to see a bigger image. It's going to be easier to sort of grasp as you scroll down the news feed and when Mark Zuckerberg talks about his news feed as being like a real newspaper, is that a reach, or do you see that being possible? It really is. You look at the data as far as the number of people who first thing in the morning, what they do is they boot up Facebook and look at the news feed. It really is, for a lot of people, that first sort of dose of information. And also what you're seeing is not only is it serving from your friends, but also there are a lot of brands on there. There are a lot of news outlets that have Facebook property. So the other big change besides graphics is the fact that they've been getting some criticism from brands about um, the algorithm they're using to decide what shows up in your news feed. You'll notice that people aren't seeing as many stories from your friends, maybe more sponsored stories, maybe the brands you're following aren't showing up. So they're going to give you a lot more control over you can look at all your friends' posts, all your all the pages you're following. So once again, allowing you to program that newspaper in a, in a more personal way. What does this mean for clients that you counsel as they're trying to really leverage social media sites like Facebook to talk about their business? I think it, it, it gives them a lot of tools, but also puts a lot of pressure on them. People want to hear what's in it for them. They want to hear things that they care about. And so content really is going to drive this. Great content will get consumed and shared, and content that is self-serving and boring and, and no one cares about but the company serving it up will get ignored and sort of you know pushed down on the news feed. Since it's so visually driven, uh, businesses need to be thinking about that and maybe changing the way they think about their products to make them more visually attractive, right? One of the big revolutions happening right now on social media is visual driving everything. Instagram, Twitter, now you see a lot more photos on Twitter. They're showing up in the feed. Facebook, I mean, the pictures are 50% bigger. They're... I mean, it really is all about, you know, big, beautiful, captivating images, and it gives people who have those images or are willing to invest in those images an advantage over people who aren't. Also, let me ask you that the desktop and the mobile Facebook, the new design is universal across all of these platforms. So if you're counseling clients, uh, they don't have to do a separate mobile app necessarily. This is all one thing. Facebook yeah? is really big on making sure that what's happening on mobile is happening on desktop and vice versa. But mobile is the fastest growing way we're all accessing our social media sites. Most of the activity, think about standing in Starbucks, scrolling through the phone, people are looking and catching up on their feed. So having that experience to be seamless through all platforms is a goal not only for Facebook, but for all companies right now. Interesting. Uh, and do you see other social networks, especially Twitter or LinkedIn, reacting to this change? I think the pressure is on all the social networks to constantly sort of introduce new features, reinvent themselves. MySpace is trying to kind of make a big comeback with Justin Timberlake sort of driven content. So all of them are wanting to be hot and happening and not be considered the friendster of, you know, 2013. <laughs> right. It's always fascinating to watch. Thanks for sharing your insights with us. My pleasure. Kevin Falkenberry is an executive vice president at the Jacksonville-based PR and advertising firm, The Dalton Agency. Follow him on Twitter at Kevin F. That's Kevin with a Y. And that's our program. Thanks to all of our guests and callers. Our producer is Sean Birch. Thanks also to Kevin Merchart, Sid Hoskinson, and David Luckin for production assistance. Karen Fagans is news director. 
If you have questions or comments about First Coast Connect, try our listener comment line at 358 358- 